And I am. So thank you and welcome, everybody. Thank you for uh, joining me today and taking some time out of your day to learn a little more about what makes you confident and how you can increase your confidence. And I'm calling this the Framework for Superpower Living Series. And we're starting with confidence. And this is, I'm happy to say this is sponsored by my company, uh, People Insure, and my division is what's called Performance Impact Coaching. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Megan McLaughlin, and I'll be your guide today in helping you really re-envision and reinvent and reignite your superpower confidence. So let me ask you a question. So when was the last time you had the confidence and the energy of a six-year-old in a Batman cape? You know, we remember that kid, you know, you may have grandchildren or children or nieces and nephews that are running around and they're fearless and they're unstoppable and energized and full of fire and just ready to take on the bad guys. And so just let me ask you for a minute, when's the last time you felt that way about your business or about just life in general, about anything? You know, when did you have that confidence and zest and just wildness for what you're doing. And when was the last time you really felt that you were performing the highest level of your abilities? So I'm just going to ask you to hold that thought for a minute. And we're going to do a couple of housekeeping things. Um, I'd love for you to turn off um, your phones, close the door if you're in an office, turn off the notifications on your computer, turn off, you know, if you have like 16 apps open, um, you know, turn some of those off because this way, if it'll make this master broadcast um, more meaningful for you, you won't get as distracted and you won't have any computer hiccups and so on. And try to multitask too, because we can never really focus and be present with two things at a time. And and if you can, silence those phones. I know we're all busy professionals and sometimes we have to check a text or um, uh, take a call and so on. But if you do, please just um, mute yourself and uh, go take care of that. And also grab a journal and something to write with because I'm going to give you all kinds of ideas. We're going to do some exercises um, in our broadcast today. Um, and you'll want to write down some notes. Now, I am going to send you some handouts and assignments after our um, presentation today, but I will email those to you after our session. But just kind of stick with me and just um, listen, let the words sink in. If you have questions, you can go ahead and tap them in the chat box and I will check on those from time to time. And I'll also um, open up for questions at the end of our uh, seminar today. And also, if for any reason you have to step away, we are recording our session today and I will get that rendered and available um, to you first thing in the morning. So again, thank you all so much for being here. So my name again is Megan McLaughlin. I know many of you um, individually, some of you, I have had the pleasure of meeting you and spending time with you and others of you on this call I don't know. So I welcome you and look forward to getting you to know you all better. I'm the Director of Performance Impact Coaching at People Insure. And what People Insure does is we help businesses accelerate their success by uh, helping them find ways to increase their revenue, to develop better operational excellence, and the performance and their individual performance and the performance of their teams, their people, and then their processes and technology. And we do that to a level that is required for them to meet their goals. And we help them establish those goals. And we say, okay, here's what it's going to take for you to get here. Work with us and we'll help you get there. So, so what I love to do is to really help individuals reignite, re-engage, rediscover the courage and confidence and the strategy that they need to bring themselves to their next level of performance. And so in a nutshell, that's what performance coaching is. 
When we think about performance, um, we often think about athletic performance. And much of the research on human performance did start in the sports world. So for athletes, there is an inner game and an outer game. And the outer game is really um, things like perfecting their fitness, their technique, their, and skills as it pertains to their sports. But there are also some important inner game factors to be developed and nurtured. So think about elite uh, athletes. They have a variety of coaches. They work with someone who works on their nutrition. Do they have the right fuel that supports the level of strength and energy that they have to have to form at to perform at their highest level? They have a they do all sorts of fitness training that may not be exactly related to their specific sport. They need to build the right muscles. They need to have the stamina and endurance that they need to perform for their sport. They have sports technicians that really examine um, all the technical actions of their sports and strategy coaches that look at what their competition is doing or the other team is doing and seeing how they can defend against that or, or be on the offense, how they can build and overcome that. And they also have a mindset. And that coach is as important, if not sometimes more important, even than all the technical people over here. And that coach works with helping them master the mental game and creating uh, and uplifting their confidence and overcoming that voice. And we all have that voice you know what it is. I know what it is. We all have it. And that voice in the back of your head that is really pointing out when you've made an error, when you're not performing to your highest ability, when you're saying, I can't do it. I don't know how to do it. Being totally intimidated by somebody that's competing with you or being intimidated because you're not as knowledgeable or experienced in your field and all of those things that are telling you you're not good enough, you can't do it, you need to step back and um, just like take the back seat, give up, go home. So that inner game and the inner voice is really crucially important too. And businesses, and many of us are business owners, we or we work in businesses, or we are looking for what our next career move is, what we want to do next, or just really how we want to live our life. But there is an inner game, an outer game there as well. For example, there are the mechanics of best practices for your industry that manifest in how you deliver your products and services. And they're seen and experienced by your clients. And the most successful professionals have a really well-developed inner game that is also seen and felt by their clients. So regular people like you and me also in our daily lives, we have an inner game and an outer game as well. And this shows up in how we perform day to day, the goals we pr uh, pursue, the boldness and um, you know, a heightened feeling of I'm really going to go after something big and also how fulfilling our life is on a day-to-day -day basis. So together with my business partner, Rebecca Coos, and I just want to introduce Rebecca here by slide. So together we bring our expertise on helping individuals and businesses maximize their inner game and their outer game in their businesses and as you as an individual. So path to my passion for human performance coaching really started in my niece's bathroom about 20 years ago. And yes, it was in the bathroom. And when I was visiting um, her and her family, I would, we, she and I would share a bathroom. And on her mirror was this post-it from her YMCA swim coach, a guy named Steve Leonardi. And he, I think the guy was really brilliant because he had a whole lot of these things in her mirror was just 
bird with them. And I thought, what a great thing to start young people so young with some ideas and concepts. This one really stuck me. And it said, in a sport where so little separates you physically, it's your mindset and mental game that makes you a winner. So think about that. You know, at that level of YMCA swimming, they're all about the same. And yes, in professional sports even, you know, there's so much training and, um, you know, physical similarity and so on. And it, it really sunk into me. And at the time, I was director of coaching for a real estate education company. And I was totally frustrated that I had so many, so few clients who could truly excel in the real estate investing game. And I knew and I had confidence that the products that I produced and that my coaches were training and the, the services they were delivering were comprehensive and were really exceptional. But there was something that was really missing from it. And I really thought to figure that piece out. And this also took me back to my previous career of managing a uh, family divorce and family law firm. And we had gotten so many great results for clients, but they were so adrift in what to do next in their lives. And I, I really saw there was just something that is so missing. And and they didn't know how to restart or redefine their lives. And this is something that just has truly haunted me for years. So the more I brushed my teeth in front of this post it and looked at it, and then this went on for a couple of months, months this was. And it's your mindset and your mental game that makes the difference. It what it's what makes you win. It's the confluence of the outer game and the inner game. And this applies to our businesses and to all areas of our life as well. So we all have industry colleagues who offer similar services. They have similar educational backgrounds. Um, they've had similar training. They've had similar professional experience. You know, we may be on a somewhat of an even playing field, but what's that spark that makes that difference? What is that thing that they have that we are seeking? So we all have people that we admire and we can see that they have a spark and a light that makes them difference. And that spark and light is how you master your performance. So performance coaching is really the marriage of successful habits, good strategies, and your mental game that brings you to operate a life that's realizing your highest potential and increasing the revenues of your business and having you excel as a professional. And this applies also to re-envisioning your business or reinventing a career or resetting and reinventing a life and exploring what's next. It is really the habits in your mental game. So the so having to define this, so I went and searched. I've been and I and you could talk to my business partner. I've been in in the seeking of finding a framework that I could use and something that I felt distilled human performance theory into a really solid easy to follow practice that I could use. And I use a methodology that's based on the world's largest international study of the highest performing professionals. And this study combined literally, you know, hundreds of thousands of data points, hundreds and hundreds of interviews with high performing people. Um, and, you know, they really went for the top 1% of business professionals. These could be our CEOs. These could be our um, salespeople. This could be in all different kinds of industries. And they were able to distill this down into six characteristics. And if you all are interested in, um, you know, all the science behind this and um, 
you know, all the, the technical stuff. I'm happy to send you a copy of this report. But there are six pillars of performance, and they are clarity, which is being clear about who you are and what you want to, how you want to show up every day and what you want to project to the world. There's energy, and this is having the physical and mental energy to take on your day and to accomplish the goals that you want to accomplish. There's necessity, and necessity is that deep, deep desire that you must take, make your goals and strategies and daily actions keep moving you forward. Being successful is, is a must. There is no, there is no option B. There is no um, plan B of not being as successful. And so they have a very high level of necessity. They also um, really understand how to be most productive and how to spend time on the things that move you forward and not mistaking frenetic activity for progress, which we all do, because sometimes it makes us feel good to seem really super busy, but we're not getting anywhere. Highest performing people really understand you have to look at what you're doing and are you getting the um, most impact for your effort. And there's also influence. And influence is having the ability to lead and the credibility and trust to make people want to follow you. So think about people that you really admire that are very high performing, very um, accomplished professionals. You innately really want to lead and follow them. And then lastly, there is courage and confidence. And this is the ability to consistently take bold action and being confident. Even if you're wrong, even if there are mistakes, even if you're scared, you're still taking these bold actions. So when I work with clients, I always like to start with confidence. And I do these, work on these habits a little bit out of order, but I always start with confidence. And the reason why is I believe that working on elevating one's confidence is really crucial to building all of the rest of these pillars. And it's the fuel that makes all the other pillars work. And when I'm asked by, uh, when I talk to um, coaching clients or potential clients, one of the biggest questions that comes up is, I'm, I just don't have the confidence to do that. I have this dream, I have this desire to make a change, but I just don't have the confidence to get there. So part one of our series and our frameworks for superpower living is going to be a deep dive into how you can build your confidence. So I'm just going to check over here and just see if I've got any. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. I don't have any questions right now. So good. I'm just going to keep on going. So let's go back to our original question. So when was the last time you had that childhood excitement, sense of wonderment and power and drive and confidence and just like this unstoppable fearlessness? And when was the last time you felt that way in your business or in a goal that you're pursuing? When was the last time you felt that you were really performing at a high level of your abilities? So, so how do you start your day? And I like asking questions. So we're going to ask a lot of questions here. So did you wake up with that unstoppable, powerful feeling today? And let's be honest, probably not. And if I was really being honest, I might have to say, no, not so much today, but that's okay. You know, we all wandered down to the kitchen. We poured that cup of coffee. This thing was going to really fire up your ambition. It was going to build your confidence, breathe life into you. And then what happens? Okay. That cup of coffee has a huge responsibility and it really doesn't deliver very often. Sometimes, yeah, but for the most part, no. And when was the last time you said to yourself, or maybe the last time today that you said to yourself, gosh, I wish I felt more confident about what I was doing. I wish I felt more comfortable, more masterful, more in 
con personal control of what I'm doing, more sure to start this thing, to take on this goal. You know, I've had the pleasure of meeting um, several of you and know that you all have a bigger dream and a bigger life that you want to live. So I can say with confidence that each of you want to up level your individual conference. And I really do acknowledge and thank you for the time that you're taking to spend with us today. So here's another question for you. Um, what if you could roll out of bed and summon that confidence. What if I was able to show you a whole series of things that you can do to really up level and summon that confidence? You know, what if before making that presentation to a potential client, before picking up that phone to make the uncomfortable call or having that um confrontational icky conversation with a spouse or a child or an employee that you've been dreading what if you could summon what if i was to show you some ways that you can summon that really unstoppable sense of confidence so first thing let's let's define what we think confidence is and i'm going to unmute all of you and i would just like to some Wick, um, I think you all are, on, are you all unmuted? Or, you know, go ahead, unmute yourselves. And just what are some quick things that you think confidence is? Or type them in the chat box and I can take a look at them. Anybody? Okay, so, you know, many of us think that confidence um is being brave and fearless in any situation all the time. Just being, you know, we, we follow our super heroes and we just um, think like they are just completely fearless. And it's not. Confidence is doing that uncomfortable thing anyway. It doesn't mean there's any absence of insecurity. Um we a lot of us think that we, some people have it and some people don't, and that's not true either. <laughs> you know, we're you know we're not necessarily born with that. Now we all know some outliers out there who are like really authentically confident people, and you could put them in any situation at any time. But it doesn't mean that they don't have doubts and insecurities. They have just gotten to a level of their own personal confidence where that doesn't necessarily show. So um, we all know that person who's the loudest and most visible person in the room. Are they the most confident? No, actually, they might be the least confident person. And they're compensating for it by being really loud and visible. That's, that's a defense mechanism to it. Is that person who presents themselves completely put together and um, perfect and just, you know, really slick and sleek? You know, we all know him or her. And, you know, we may all be kind of jealous of them. They're not necessarily the most confident person either. They may just really have taken the time to prepare more and having their outward appearance may be a way that they elevate their confidence, but they're not necessarily confident. That can be a mask as well. So what I really want you to do is sit back and give yourself some credit because, you know, we see ourselves in all of these different scenarios and you are more confident and capable than you think you are, than you give yourself uh, credit for. So in fact, you know, if, if I would, if we were to talk and you would say, I'm absolutely confident. I am not, I am fearless. I'm not afraid of anything in this. I got this covered. I would challenge that you're not living a big enough life, that you are completely stuck in your comfort zone and are unwilling to get out of it and grow. So it's that insecurity and doubt that you use as the fuel to make you go. 
And we know all of you are here because you want to aim for that higher life. So confidence is all it is, is really knowing and trusting that you can reliably show up as your best self and succeed in a given situation. It's knowing that you're going to learn and try again and experiment again and just keep getting back in the arena even when it doesn't go well. It's knowing that you can figure things out. And I will never forget, this has been several years ago, and, and my business partner, Rebecca, and I, um, we have known each other for decades, literally. And I remember one day we're sitting down, and we used to live on opposite um, sides of the country, and we would like meet at conferences and so on. And I sat down and I asked her, I said, what do you think makes you most successful? And she said to me, with like out hesitation, like, I know how I can figure something out. I might not know how to do it, but I know I can figure it out. And that really landed on me of like, yes, that is a really big piece of confidence. It knows that, like, you're going to be a great learner. You're just going to go learn whatever it is that you need to learn. That you you can adapt and adjust and pivot and be really agile in taking um showing up for what's next and taking on like all the curveballs that life gets, but knowing that I'm just going to work through this. It might not be perfect. It might not look like how I thought it was going to look like, but you're going to keep going. You're going to accept that input and critique that we all get and that we all dread from people. And, um, you know, not take it personally and feel judged or rejected every time. We're going to take that little seed of what the truth is in there that we can take and use as a tip to grow and as an opportunity. And I know that's really hard to say, and it's hard to do sometimes, but if you can separate out often the emotion that you're feeling about that critique and look at, okay, here, here is what's said or how how it was intended to be said, it can be a huge opportunity of understanding something that maybe you don't even see about what you're doing. That's confidence. That's confidence to take that critique and say, okay, I'm going to learn from this. And they're not going to be able to say that again about me because I'm going to learn and improve and pivot and adjust and do all the things necessary to make this work. So real confidence is the ability to take a lot of new information and make decisions and choices about it. And yes, I definitely said decisions because so many of us get all wrapped up in trying to make a decision and weighing all these pieces and this piece and this piece and all the what ifs and so on. Sometimes the most powerful thing that you can do is just to make a decision about something and go with it. Whether it turns out to be right or wrong, use your best judgment that you have at that time and go for it. Move forward, even amid, amid all of the doubt and fear, even the rejection and the you know mean people and the chaos and all the stuff that you might encounter along the way. Really true confidence is just moving forward one step at a time. And it it comes and it, it and it grows as you're moving towards a goal or something that you identify as being important in your life or important to accomplish. So, so our definition is showing up as your best self, having a willingness to learn and an eagerness to try again. So we're going to pause here and we're going to do a quick little exercise. And I would like you to just jot down, um, you know, four or five things that in the last couple years you started taking action towards. This can be a little tiny goal. It can be a really big goal that you haven't accomplished yet. It can be an unfinished project. It can be something that didn't go so smoothly. It can be something that maybe you even abandoned um, at, at this point. Um, and something that at the time it made you feel completely insecure and doubtful about your abilities. So, so I'm just going to like 
pause here for a couple minutes and just let you think about what a couple of those things are. That you, you tried, maybe you were hugely successful, all right? Maybe you had some success with it, but not the success you were looking for. Maybe, um, maybe you didn't even start. Maybe it's still on that uh, goal to do list. So I'm just gonna pause here for a minute and give you a minute to to jot some things down. And I could sing to you or have really snappy music, but I won't do that. I want you all to stay with me for a little while longer, at least. <laughs> Could you repeat the question, please? Yes. It's, I want you to think of five things, like in the last couple years, or four or two, or however many that you can, that were things that you took action towards, a goal that you started working on, that you may or may not have uh, completed, that may or may not have been successful, but just something that you were marching in the last couple years. Okay, so do we have a couple ideas that we've come up with? So, and you can work on this more after our um, session today, but how do those experiences, even if they were hugely unsuccessful, even if you were, you abandoned them because you were completely insecure, you were not getting the results that you wanted, you were completely doubtful about your abilities, of those things, is there something in that that you can be proud of? That there was an action that you took that you felt really strong about, that you was was successful. Maybe the overall goal wasn't successful. And while you were in that process, how did you show up as your best self? How did what did you learn? Um, and how did you celebrate it? I'm a big believer that even um, even our small goals, even our small accomplishments, even our small tries or attempted things really deserve to be examined and celebrated because we took the initiative to do something. We took a chance and most likely we learned something. Um, and the, all of these things, even if they didn't go well, exhibit a sense of confidence. So, you know, again, all of you are more confident than you think you are. You've probably done some really brazen things. I know for those of you who are parents, mama bears are formidable. You know, you will take actions that you never thought were in you um, or, you know, in anything that's protecting a loved one. I, I'm, I, sometimes I'm like so amazed at what will come out of my mouth in that moment. And we all have that. We all have that 
element of um, confidence. So I want you to acknowledge yourself for the confidence that it took to take those things on. So does anybody want to share about something that they took a chance on? Okay, Sherry, let me see. Yeah, Sherry, all right. Can you unmute? There you go. Okay, all right. Yeah, so you said that um, you are um, working on your bachelor's, you're restructuring your family, and the process is messy. Yeah, no, life's messy. But what are you applauding yourself for in this? Um, <clears throat> so I started the bachelor's degree five years ago mm -hmm. and, um, I had to put it on hold because we got the kids. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm raising my grandkids for the people here who don't know. Mm -hmm. And, um, COVID happened at the same time. So I had to put everything on hold and, um, I keep meaning to call back the university to re-enroll because I have five classes left to mm -hmm. And that always goes to the back burner because I know it's difficult. You know, it takes a lot of effort. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, I did it. I called. I Well, I didn't call. Actually, they called me um, for another reason. And um, I said, well, your records are wrong because I actually have not graduated. And uh, she was talking about my associates. But I said, mm -hmm. no, I'm five classes from my, uh, my bachelor's. Mm -hmm. And she looked and she said, you're right. <clears throat> she said, let's, uh, let's see when those next classes are. And they started one week later, which was last Monday. Wow. Wow. Said, Excellent. Sign me up. And so I'm back in school uh, for those five classes only, but um, I'm perfect. Finished. Yeah. Later. So yeah. Excellent. So I really, I, I applaud that because that took some confidence and overcoming fear to do that. All right, let's see. Sunny, you moved here from Minnesota without knowing anybody during COVID. So that's excellent. And um, so Suzette, I see. I'm going to unmute you, Suzette. So Suzette, you, um, so you became self-employed. That's yes. a big step. Huge. And in a time where you know, my industry is um, really in the tank right now. Right. So trying right. to, you know, keep things going. And, you know, there's times you want to give up and you're like, no, I don't want to give up. I'm not a quitter. I just need to hang in there. And exactly. that voice inside my head says, well, you better start looking for something else. You better. And it's like, no, no, no. That's the wrong we don't want to listen to that. That's right. negative talk. Keep going. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Just keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. So, so excellent. Excellent. So, um, so yeah. So thank you all for sharing. And if I see, so all of our gentlemen here are like really, really being quiet and yes. Okay. Sometimes that's how guys are. It's okay. All right. We'll let them be silent participants. It's all right. So mine are a couple of things I did was doing public speaking because it just terrified me before and doing live seminars like this. And, you know, it was, a, it was something that I said, you know, I really need to do this. I need to learn to master this. I started, some presentations were better than others. Some were horrible. And you know what? I just kept going. And it really has increased my confidence about doing it. And that's why I'm sitting here in front of you all today. So so it can be done. So I, um, my point here is that confidence can be nurtured and grown. And it can be grown into a superpower. And it can be really summoned when you need it. And so in our next three days together, we're going to walk through a framework that will nurture and grow your confidence. And I use the term framework a lot in this. And all a framework is, is a checklist, something that's a quick reference thing 
that you can use to process ideas, plan your actions, kind of evaluate where you are, some steps, conscious steps that you can take um, to elevate that confidence. And my coach taught me, and you know, even coaches have coaches. And I really believe in coaches because it's helped me enormously. But my coach taught me that if you can distill concepts into a checklist, like almost a to-do list or bullet points, it really helps you learn and take action quicker. It improves your performance quicker and more permanently. And so we're going to talk about a lot of um, frameworks here. So let me go back to a question. So do you know when this year where you felt most confident do you have a, when you had a clear picture of what you wanted? And it was probably around New Year's and we blast off January 1 and we're energized and confident. We might even be Batman Cape confident. We may be so on fire to start a fresh new year. And we do that because usually we spent the week before in some form of self-reflection. All right, good or bad. We were looking at that past year and making declarations of what we were going to do to improve our lives and declarations of what we were never going to do again or never let happen again and so on. So who's with me? Yep, exactly. We are, yes. And, um, you know, and they come out in the form of New Year's resolutions. And there are studies, you know, in performance training and in, you know, performance activities that are really well documented that say it comes down to about February 8th, where everything, we've lost all momentum. But what happens is we start out really on fire and and life starts to happen. And then we have those dumpster fire days. You know, you know, those days, we all have them where it's like, what the heck am I doing? And you just lose your momentum. And then by that first or second week of February, you are back to where you were December 30, I don't know, 24th or whatever. And you're just not moving forward. And a lot of it is because you don't have a framework. You don't have something to come back to, to remind you when you're in that dumpster fire, to remind you of, okay, here are some really logical steps and things that I can do to get back on track. All right. So you need those frameworks to elevate your confidence um, as well. And I want you to think of confidence that it's like building a fire. So my goal this week is to give you a whole toolkit, things that you can do to come in and increase your confidence. And it's like building a fire. So when we're outside camping and we start building a fire, we um, you know, get some kindling and we get some matches and we might get some little twigs and leaves and things that are flammable. And maybe we go to the newspaper and we try some things and some of them don't work. Some of them do work and it builds really slowly and, you know, it takes a long time. Well, we're going to do some activities that are going to be like that kindling that we're really going to research and try things on and experiment with some ideas all right but after you keep practicing all right you're going to turn your confidence will turn into the gas fireplace where you flip on the switch and say okay i need to muster my confidence and you know when you turn on a gas fireplace there's like that three second delay for the gas to get through the pipe and then there's the swoosh that's how you can summon confidence. That is the feeling of that. The exercises that we're going to go through are going to build some foundation, that kindling, but then we're going to get some things that like instantly get you there. Okay, so who's excited? Who's with me? Okay, awesome. So um, so we're going to give you a lot of tools and practices to do that. So a framework is not a hack. And I don't like the term hack because to me it implies that you can bypass doing the work to get there. Like it's just this complete shortcut that eliminates a lot of important things. You still have to do some work. But 
when you work with me and using my frameworks, it's faster, it's more direct, and it's a proven path, and it cuts through a lot of the trial and error. So um, after you try on some of the tools that we're going to talk about in the next couple of days, I want you to practice, all right? They may not all work for you. You may be, come up with revisions of those that do work for you, but the point is, is to just keep trying. If it's not perfect, try something else. But these are a lot of ideas that you can take um, and go from that feeling of being really awkward and uncomfortable and unknowing and to being confident um, and in control of how you react to the situation. So here's an important distinction here is confidence is how you react, not how you control. All right, there are things every day in our lives that we have absolutely no control over. And if we get all wound up that we have to control every little thing that's out of our control, we're going to end up feeling really defeated and doubtful and insecure and um, deflated. But you can control how you present yourself in any given situation. Okay, so we're going to dive in. So... So there are frameworks, again, for confidence, and they are clarity, congruence, competence, connection, capability, and contribution, all the Cs. Clarity is about the situation, and it's it's kind of pre-gaming um, what's coming up for you, like what's, like what's that meeting that you have, what's that conversation that you need to do, what actions do you need to take to improve your marketing and build your business, what do you want to occur here? Congruence is really being in alignment with your values. Um, competence is the, your collection of your knowledge and your skills and talents and abilities that you have. And then there's connection. And connection has two parts. It's not only connection with other people, but it's uh, connection with yourself. And then there's capability. Capability is really the knowledge uh, that you can do it every time. That you have done some work, you've done the research, you've, you've increased your competence, but you know that you can do it every time. And then contribution. And I really believe that the quickest way to gain confidence fast is to contribute something to others, to teach others, to share your competence, your capability, your grade, your talents with others. So today we're going to really focus on clarity. Um, and in a nutshell, clarity is developing an intentional and detailed picture of the outcome that you want. All right, it might not occur exactly how you envision it, but you will have the tools to adapt and proceed. And it's the awareness to recognize that the change in how something happens or the order in which it happens is not necessarily a bad thing. It's having awareness that when something doesn't go according to plan, um, that there may be a huge opportunity to uncover, that that curveball really may be a an opportunity for you to consider something else. So again, it's the intentional and detailed picture of the outcome you want and the awareness to recognize opportunities that may come up that may look like problems. So to start to improve any area of your life, you have to get really clear on exactly where you are now. And so let's think about a goal or project or thing you want to change in your life and feel more confident about. You know, maybe it's something on that list of things that you tried and uh, maybe you were successful. Maybe you want to become more successful. Maybe you, um, you know, want to build from there. Maybe you want to have a different outcome than you had when you first tried it. And so a couple questions that I always like to ask is, where am I not taking full responsibility for this situation? So it doesn't mean that you're blaming yourself. It doesn't mean that um, you caused it, that it's your fault. Um, it may not even be within your control, but what you do have responsibility in, in it with how you choose to show up and handle it. So where are you not taking full responsibility for that. 
the other one is, is what, what's the truth about this that I know, but I'm ignoring. And my coach asked me this uh, several sessions ago. And I just like, you know, it's like, why are you asking me that question? You know, <laughs> like, why are you forcing me to kind of face this? Um, but it's, but it's really good. It's like, what's, what's the truth about this that I'm just pretending I don't know. And also, where do I need to be more accountable? Where do I need to really take more action on it? And, and in examining these things in areas where you're not feeling confident, this will start to get to the place of where I am now and where I need to build. And we're going to be in the process of building through these next couple days. So, okay, so I see body language out there. All right, so everybody just did this, all right, or clenched their teeth or made a face or did something. I get it. And that's the reaction that you have when you really don't want to face things. And congratulations, because that's the first step of doing this work to increase your confidence. So clarity, what's the end goal? Like, what do you want? All right. If it was a perfect world, what do you want to happen? All right. If you had the perfect meeting, what would that be? If you made the perfect um, phone call to a new client and got them on board, what would be the best outcome possible? If you executed with the highest and best part of yourself, what would that be? And we often enter situations on the fly where we don't a lot of preparation with no thought or planning and we become really discouraged and insecure and and unconfident when when they don't go well because we weren't prepared so i invite you when you think about things that you have coming up and things on your calendar practice the situation maybe role play a little bit um practice that conversation and maybe just jot down a couple talking points, create your own framework checklist of these are the things I want to cover in this call. This is um, the outcome I'm looking for. And also examining what could go wrong and how will I handle it? So those of us that are in businesses, um, at some point we sell something to someone else. And, and many, many times you get a no or you get objections and concerns and so on. Well, think about when you're going through and pre-gaming a situation, what are gonna be the objections? What's gonna be the pushback? And how will you respond to that? And being prepared with those things will make you much more confident because you know they're coming. You know, in some form or fashion, all those objections will come. But being a little bit prepared and having thought through that process really makes a huge, huge um, difference. So we're going to do an exercise. And I, I call my exercises tool time because this will be a tool that uh, you will refer back to or I would love for you to refer back to as we um, go through our journey together. So whenever I work one-on-one -on -one with a client, I really do work with some very... Um, customized uh, specific things that we work deeply and specifically on for their issues and the transformation that they are looking for, whether it's building a business or um, changing careers or whatever it is. We'll get really specific, but I always use this exercise and I do it um, really early in our sessions together because it forms a compass for everything else that we put on the roadmap. And this is in and of itself a framework to use. And it's a quick reference tool to filter your actions and decisions through. And I call it the, the my three words exercise. And after our session today, I'm going to email you a worksheet where you can noodle around with these ideas a little bit more. And the exercise is to come up with three words that can serve as a daily reminder of who you want to be and how you want to interact with others and 
words that you're, are your personal success markers. These are things that make you the most successful um, every day of your life. So, um, and so in, in total, you'll come up with nine words. And make these words, these descriptive words, really aspirational. It's not who you are today. It's not how you're feeling today. It's not what happened this morning. It's not the thing you're facing this afternoon. It's who you want your future self to look like. If you were had this unlimited confidence, if you had that Batman cape, on who is this person so so pick three words that describe to find the best of who you are or the best of who you could be then you want interactions for others and and so the, your your words for self think of them as something that you would want to write on your tombstone you know i met Sunny and she was these three things. Okay. I met Suzette or Dawn or Fred or anybody that's here in this call with me. What are those three things? The next are your interactions with others. And this, think of this as like if you had someone eulogize you, and I don't want to get into the whole death thing and planning your own whatever, but what would you want someone to say? Like how they remember interacting with you, what they came away with that was part of you. And how do you want to make people feel when they interact with you? And then next is your success markers. Think of a time when you enjoyed great success at doing something. And that is why I asked you to look back over the last couple of years because they're most familiar and being proud of something. What the thing that you're proud of in there is one of your success markers. Who were you being? You know, who are you when you are being your most successful? And, you know, what are the strongest, these are the strongest characteristics you have or want to have. Um, and, um, you know, like what makes you a badass? When you're feeling really badass, who are you being? All right, and I don't mean badass in an obnoxious way. I mean, just strong and confident okay so let's take a couple minutes and jot down some of the words that come to mind and i'm going to give everybody we're going to do this like for the next three minutes and uh then we'll um open up and see um what some of the ideas are
Okay. All right. So does, oh, excellent. Okay. So, all right. So I've got some feedback from Fred. So um, for his best self is connected to, um, is connected to your true and highest self. That's very good. And being joyful and being joyful in interactions with others. Um, he wants people to see him as uplifting, intentional, and trusted. And personal success markers are a doer making it happen and changing the world. So those are all very good. Excellent. Yes. So take some time and um, think through these. So play with these words. If you're just coming up with words and you're feeling kind of flat, get out the thesaurus. All right, because, you you know, type in a word that maybe is like, that's not exactly what I want. That doesn't have the power and passion that I feel like with this. But the source can be a huge thing to just prompt your memory for some ideas. What feels good? What energizes you? Remember, these are characteristics that are not necessarily um, who you are today, but where you want to go, who you want to be. Get really bold. All right, this is the identity and character that you want to live into. And even if it sounds bossy and self-serving or pompous, remember, you don't necessarily have to, to uh, uh, share these with anyone. Um, but if they serve as reminders and push and, and you know make you a little uncomfortable, like this is really big, I've got to really live large to get into this, you're on the right track. So dig deeper. So part of the next step of the exercise, and we won't do this here, but I'd love for you to work on this um, uh, tonight or this week, is for each word, really think about why you chose it. Um, what speaks to you about that? What does it mean to you? Why is it important to you? Um, and, and just dig a little bit deeper with this. I encourage you to put these words, this list of words somewhere where you see them every day. And it can be on your bathroom mirror. It can be on the refrigerator. It can be in your day timer. Um, you can put them in your phone and set an alarm. Um, whereas at certain different times during the day, in accordance with different things that you may be doing that day, an alarm comes up and, and says, you know, hey, John, you know, you this, this, and this. Um, so look at things like that. So, um, so you know, so you're always reminding yourself who you want to be, how you want to interact with others, and the things that make you the most successful. So excellent work, and thank you so much for for taking the time to do it. So. Also, your words are going to change over time. I remember when I did this exercise, I was in a live seminar and it, I just wasn't feeling super inspired. And then when I went home and thought about it, I came up with almost completely different words. Um, and from time to time through um, the years that followed, sometimes all of the words that I've chosen for myself don't quite fit anymore. And that's okay because you're growing and evolving. Um, I would say revisit this at least annually, and if not quarterly, um, I would encourage you to do it quarterly because as you are growing and building your confidence and elevating your performance, you're going to start seeing yourself in a different light. And here's a bonus opportunity is, um, even to pick one word that, and it doesn't have to be a word out of this list, but a word that is going to be your theme for the year. And I do this a lot with my um, business clients or teams that I'm working with. What is one word that they can all motivate themselves around that and pass any decision that they're making? Is this moving me closer to this goal to be this thing or is it moving further away so it's really fun and also if you have a family to create 
a, a family theme for a year is often good. I've seen a lot of people do that as well. So, so I just, I love this exercise because I feel it's very foundational and I know we spent a lot of time on this, um, uh, today, but it's, it's really becomes the core and compass of where you're going. So let's put this tool into practice and let's pretend it's the night, um, before, um, the morning or the morning of an important meeting. And I encourage all of you from a productivity standpoint to always examine your day, either the night before or the morning of, and so that you can be like fully prepared and set for your day. Take a few minutes and anticipate how you want the day to go. Um, what meetings do you have? What outcomes do you want from those meetings? Um, of the um, tasks that you have scheduled? How do you want to show up to do those? And let's go back to our clarity questions and kind of run them through the filter of your uh, clarity words and apply them what you have scheduled for the day. So I'm going to use an example. Um, well, you know what? Let's use Fred's example here. Let me get over back over here to, all right. Okay, so um, Fred has a meeting, all right? And so he wants to um, get up in the morning and feel really connected to his highest self and wants to be joyful. So what are some things that he can do to create that feeling of joy? And um, and, and let's see what else. And uh, okay, so interactions with others. In this meeting, he wants to uplift others. Like it's a heavy meeting, but the word uplift is in there. Like I want to uplift them. I want to be very intentional about how I am, what I do, what I say. And I want to have the persona, the presence that makes them really trust me, trust my expertise. And, um, you know, and how I'm going to show up is as somebody somebody that makes things happen and bonfire to change the world. And so you're going to filter and look at and role play in your mind and visualize that meeting through those words. So so I asked you, like, what's coming up on your calendar um, the rest of the day or tomorrow that's here and and you can take your words as they are now, they may not be the perfect words, but if you applied those things to that situation, how much stronger and more confident would you feel? And by, and it's not just thinking about it, it's like when you get there, do that, okay? Um, but, but be very focused and intentional about that. So the next step, and the last thing we're gonna do today is what I call a flash action habit. And this is something where you can take the background of what we've worked on with our words and like instantly apply them to what you're doing. This is the swoosh piece. This is flipping on the gas fireplace of your confidence. And so, and with each of our frameworks, as we go through, we're going to have an exercise that's going to take some time and some introspection for you to do. And then we're going to have like something that you can like deploy right away. And that's going to be your flash action habit. And it really, um, again, it ties back to the promise that I said, like you can nurture and grow your confidence into where you are just doing these flash action habits and you are getting where you need to be to be with your confidence. So today's habit for clarity is what I call the door frame or the phone trigger. And so in that moment, before you um, like go through the door or pick up the phone to make that call or start that conversation, because usually when something begins with you doing one of those things, you're walking through a door somewhere, you're picking up a phone, or you're coming over to sit down and saying, we need to have, talk, have a conversation. In the instant before that, just remind yourself of who do I want to be? And what would my most successful self do? How would they handle this? 
and just like repeat those three words because they, after a while, they will become so ingrained in you. You will know exactly what to do. What do you want to make happen? What is the intentional um, desired outcome? Just take those three seconds before that and make, make it a trigger that when you do walk through a door that you decide like whatever is on the next other side of it, like whatever you're going to, you're going to look at how am I going to be my best self? When I pick up that phone to make that sales call or to speak to that client, how do I want them to see me? How will I be most successful in this? So I'd love for you to, to practice that with something um, today. And so, of course, we have some homework. All right. So I wouldn't be a, a trainer, teacher, coach if I didn't leave you with a couple assignments. But I'd like you to work on your clarity chart. And I will um, get this out to you momentarily after our call. Um, it, try on some words. You can change them. Um, put it in your phone alarms. Put this a couple different places where you will see and revisit this through the day. If you're really stuck with this, um, call a friend or somebody that you really trust and value and ask them um, how they see you. How do they see you as your best self? How do they see you interact with others or how you are when you are your most powerful and confident? Take some of that, that input. And, you know, you can also ask that trusted friend to hold you accountable for those things. You know, give me some feedback. Do you see me being these things? So, and also practice by taking a look at your calendar on what you've planned for the day and how can you apply these things? How can you go through the questions of what's the outcome I want, visualize how I want this to go, how I want to present and you know, and look at what happens if it doesn't go well. Um, you know, there were, you know, like, for instance, in this call, like there are a hundred things that have, could have gone wrong. And there were a couple that have. But, you know, I wanted to show up as being um, joyful and um, competent and so on. And it's like, okay, I just did that. We got through it. And you all probably didn't see the technical stuff that was happening. So, you can do it and it just takes some practice and also that flash action habit when you walk through the door or pick up the phone who am i going to be it's that simple so thank you all for spending a um this hour with me and i apologize we've gone over a couple minutes but i'll look forward to having you with me um tomorrow where we're going to go through several more steps of the framework um, we are going to do an exercise and we'll do a flash action habit for each. And, you know, let's just go play with this. Let's go have some fun. And I'd love to have some feedback tomorrow with what you did with what we've done so far, how it felt and how you're feeling confident. So thank you so much. And I will look forward to seeing each and every one of you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Bye now.